What is good, YouTube? It's that one camera guy back at it again with a, a short talk with you about figuring out when you should upgrade your A6000 <laughs> kit lens, which most of you are familiar with. So this is sort of just sort of a rambling uh, about that. So if it doesn't interest you, uh, feel free to jump to another video. I've got some more A6000 videos up the pipeline, but I want to have this conversation directly with you so that way you can understand a little bit better the thinking process as far as when you plan to upgrade or when you should. Now, I'm guessing many of you that are watching this video either got the camera as a gift or you bought it for yourself or maybe even you're just considering testing out the Sony mirrorless system and you've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, but I would, I would imagine most of you are budget conscious people. And I remember back when I first got my first DSLR back in 2010, I got the Canon T2i with the 18 to 55 kit lens, which I then swapped out for an 18 to 135. But I had a very, you know, a decent budget of $1,000 when I first started because I wanted to start producing YouTube videos back in 2010, which I ended up doing on a different YouTube channel. And a T2i was my first DSLR. And I was in the same boat. I had this kit lens for the Canon system. And I didn't know really what lenses to go after next. So what I wanna go over today is figuring out systematically kind of what I recommend as far as the next lens you should consider getting or maybe you shouldn't even consider a lens at this time. The way I think about it, before you even consider getting a lens, and I know this is this cliche or this saying is used over and over again is, um, you should use the full potential of the lens first. Once you realize the full potential of that lens, then when you realize the weakness that that lens has or the struggle you're having with it, that's when you should start looking at options to upgrade that lens, maybe getting a prime lens, which gets better low light photos, or consider adding lighting to your photos to improve and get better uh, images with better lighting. So there's a lot of things to consider uh, before you do your upgrade. Now, what's really cool is that I've recently released a handful of Sony A6000 videos that will show you how to maximize uh, your A6000 kit lens and your understanding the full manual exposure control settings. So it's a shameless plug for those videos. If you haven't checked them out, I really recommend you do if you are a beginner. But the way I would look at it is if you're on a budget, right, the next lens you should really get if you're not, if you don't need an app like reach, let's say this is the only lens that you have, is consider getting a prime lens. That is the next lens. And we talked about this in my other guide, is that a prime lens means it does not zoom. And typically prime lenses have a maximum aperture, a larger maximum aperture, which will let more light into your camera. So the next set of lenses that I would recommend if you're kind of budget conscious is to go with a manual aperture focused lens. And I did a video showing you how to actually operate and use these lenses. I recommended the um, the 35, the Makey 35 f1.7, and then this Makey also makes a 50 millimeter version as well. I would recommend the 50 millimeter version if you're looking to do more portrait type shots and you want to get more background blur uh, or more better out of focus control with your photos. And then the 35 f1.7, I think, is a really good all-around general purpose prime lens. And if you watch my tutorial guide on manual focusing, you're going to realize it is so easy and simple to use manual focus prime lenses. Now, I recommend this if you're on a tight budget, you want to spend less than $100, and you want to get a lot more out of your camera. You want to, you want to get some pizzazz. You want to get some... Uh, a better look to your images, some more control over that depth of field, which everyone is always itching to get when you first start off with a, a camera, like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. And here are some, if you have, for example, a slightly bigger budget and you want to get an autofocus lens, two lenses I recommend is, this is the 50 millimeter F1.8. Now I do not own the optical steady shot version. This model that I have here is the one that's designed for full frame, but also works for APS-C cameras like the A6000. 
This goes for about 200 US dollars. I've seen the optical steady shot version go for about $250, uh, which isn't bad. And then you have this one here, which is another one I recommend. It is the Sony 80, uh, 35 f1.8. This is uh, a really good lens. It has optical steady shot and it's compact, it's light, and it has autofocus, but it goes for about 450 US dollars. So it, again, if you're just an amateur enthusiast, you're just, or like a hobbyist, you're just getting started, you really don't want to invest a lot of money into buying really expensive lenses because again, you want to train yourself to learn how to use the camera when you realize the potential and you realize how to use your gear, it's at that moment when you can actually know in your brain that, hey, this lens is holding me back. I can't shoot X, Y, and Z event. I need to upgrade. I need to get a better lens. That's when you know. When you, when you know that for yourself, that's when you should look at the other, uh, other uh, things to consider. Now, let me show you. So you, you've got your kit lens here. Okay, so you're, you got your 16 to 50 kit lens, and I know you've looked at these other lenses, okay? Those of you that have been itching to buy some new glass, you've looked at these two lenses. Let me pull them out real quick here. Okay, I know you've, been lo you've looked at these two lenses. This is the 18 to 105 G series lens. It's a constant aperture zoom lens. F well, constant, yeah, constant aperture zoom lens, F4, and this is the 16 to 70 F4 constant aperture zoom lens. Now these two lenses are kind of your step up. Like if you were going to get a much better kit lens, these two would be the ones you would want to look at. Now to keep it very simple, I'll probably do a video on this, but I would look at the 18-105 to f4 more for video users because you have this zoom rocker right here and it's similar to your kit lens. And the 16-70 to f4 is more for the travel kit friendly folks that want something a little bit lighter and for travel friendly. But I'll tell you the truth. I'll be, I'm going to give you my personal opinion. I, I really, and it's not a knock on people. I don't want people to get offended by this. That's not the point. Is uh, don't get too obsessed over small things like sharpness on your lenses, especially when you're dealing with low end lenses like kit lenses. Yeah, they might not be sharp, uh, they might not be optically the best. But when you post an image on your social media and you post something for your friends and families to see, do you think they're going to ask about, hey, that doesn't look that sharp? Or, hey, I see some chromatic aberration. Most of your family and friends or uh, other people in your social circles that are not cam camera enthusiasts are not going to even know the difference. Um, but when you know how to use things like lighting and you know how to use your lenses to your full potential, they're going to appreciate the look that you get out of your photos. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think when you start to worry about sharpness on a lens, I think you should be at a point where you know, like you know that you need better optical quality. So for example, I've seen people say, hey, I want the lens to be sharp from edge to edge. Maybe you're a beginner, you don't know what I mean. Some lenses, they're, they're blurry <laughs> on the corners of the photograph. So if you're doing landscape photos, for example, then sharpness from edge to edge makes a big difference. But if you're just starting out, why, why drop the big money for a really expensive prime lens, for example, or some of the higher end glass that costs a thousand to $2,000? Why not just, again, stick with your kit lens for the time being, keep using it, get the full potential out of it. And when you realize, you start looking at your work and you're like, hey man, I think I'm gonna start doing some paid work or maybe I think um, you know I'd like a little bit more quality, then now you know. Now you know inside here that that's the right decision you're gonna make. If you start doing impulse purchases, which you know it happens, you know we make impulse purchases, you're gonna end up buying glass and you're gonna realize you don't need it. And that's the worst thing you can do for yourself is that you end up buying something that you ever never end up using. And I deal with that all the time. I buy a lot of equipment and gear, I never end up using and I end up selling it and I lose money at the end of the day. So I just don't want you to go to that same pitfall uh, because of those reasons. One thing that, and I am gonna work on a video for it, and I, and I already did one where you use the pop-up flash on your Sony a6000. Man, if you learn how to just use the pop-up flash, you can get away with some pretty good photos in low light environments if you know how to use the flash. And then I've got a couple of videos down the pipeline that show how to use the MK320 flash. 
and it'll be up at some point. And it's basically just trying to show you, you don't gotta break the bank, you don't gotta spend thousands of dollars because not everybody has that kind of budget. Um, and like I said, I was at that point too and I didn't know what to buy and I would get sticker shock prices. And again, I'm just speaking from my, from my experience. I remember when I first bought a, a you know like a five hundred six hundred dollar lens, it it was a shock to me, you know, just dropping that kind of money on something that costs that much. It is kind of tough to do, but what I really recommend you do is stick with the current camera you have, keep shooting with it, shoot with the kit lens if you're a Sony A six thousand user. Um, consider looking at these prime lenses. And by the way, all this stuff is posted in the description below. You don't have to buy these things, um, but you know, if you ever consider getting into this stuff and you like the work that I'm doing and you appreciate the tutorial guides, I get a really tiny kickback from any purchase that you make from Amazon. Or for example, maybe you wanna consider buying something today that's not even technology related. If you click on that Amazon link in the description below and you buy something completely different, I get a little kickback anyway. And that kind of stuff helps create the content that I'm doing. And I typically just reinvest any money that I get back into the channel. I pick up new lenses and little items that I can review and show you how to take advantage of your gear. I know that was a little plug and a little ad, but I gotta put that in there for the content. Guys, that's all I got for you. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Are you looking to upgrade? Do you have any questions? Do you have any ideas? for me for future videos that you want me to talk about. Maybe you want me to compare some lenses or something like that. I I don't mind doing it. I'll do my absolute best that I can for it. Um, with that said, subscribe if you haven't. Like the video if you thought it was helpful. And with that said, I'm your host, that one camera guy, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye.